September 30th marks the celebration of the Mid-Autumn Festival, a traditional holiday in China. As families gather to appreciate the full moon, indulging in mooncakes is an indispensable tradition. Currently, a myriad of mooncakes have flooded the shelves of major supermarkets, even in overseas Chinese stores. The most popular among these are the salted egg yolk and lotus seed paste mooncakes, a delectable blend of savory egg yolk enveloped in sweet, smooth lotus paste that is truly tempting. But recently, it has been uncovered that the golden hue of egg yolks might not originate from genuine duck eggs, but could potentially be the result of synthetic processes. Xin Fei, a Chinese influencer renowned for exposing food scandals in China, has shed light on this counterfeit egg yolk production. All right, let's kick things off with some egg yolk powder. But remember, not too much or it's going to burn your stomach. Next, the star of the show, some starch. Go ahead and add a little extra. It won't hurt. Thought we were done. Oh no, the high-tech heavy lifting starts now. We're adding some colorant now, give it a good stir. This stuff's pretty powerful. Now, a salted egg isn't complete without some salt, and it's got to be a bit oily, you know? Next up, a bit of artificially made oil, but not too much or it'll foam up. Add a splash of water and mix it well. Transfer it to the machine hopper. This automatic production machine sure beats ducks at their own game. These artificial yolks are mass-produced by machines capable of churning out 200,000 units in just an hour, explaining the astonishingly cheap mooncakes available online. So, how are genuine salted egg yolks made? We start with duck eggs collected straight from the duck shed and marinate them in a special yellow mud mixture prepared traditionally with salt water, black tea, and yellow wine. Once the eggs are evenly covered with the mud, we seal them off from air with some cling wrap. After 10 days in a cool place, the mud gets cleaned off in a machine. The yolks firm up and take on a lush red hue, retaining all their oiliness during the marination. Separate the yolk and the whites, place them on a tray, and spray a bit of high-proof liquor to get rid of any unwanted smells. Then, off to the oven, they go. The resulting salted egg yolks have a delightful golden hue and a melt-in-your-mouth texture coupled with a hint of charred aroma. In light of the ongoing concerns regarding food safety in China, it comes as a relief to many that several reputable manufacturers continue to use authentic duck eggs in their mooncake recipes. However, concerns over food safety persist in China as counterfeit and potentially harmful food products continue to infiltrate the market, prompting consumers to remain vigilant. Recently, a netizen unveiled the use of waste paper as filling in meat buns, a discovery that is nothing short of shocking. Can you believe how unscrupulous some businesses are these days? Let's talk about what's really inside the filling of those meat buns. They soak waste cardboard in water until it softens. Mix it with a bit of meat filling, add some fragrances and spices, stir well, and there you have your bun filling. The average customer wouldn't even realize they're eating meat buns adulterated with cardboard, feeding people, even kids, something not even animals would eat. Nowadays, it seems like even a simple bun isn't safe to eat. Are these deceitful merchants losing their minds over money? Making a profit this way, don't they fear being haunted in their sleep? How can they even sleep with a clear conscience? Water-injected meats are far too common in China, with recent footage surfacing of an individual injecting water into lamb meat, a tactic employed to inflate the meat's weight and hence its selling price. Alarmingly, some unscrupulous traders go further, adding gelatin, alum, and dyes to the water, jeopardizing consumer health to an even greater degree. Mutton tripe and duck intestines are often featured ingredients at hot pot restaurants but you wouldn't believe the conditions they are produced under. Furthermore, in Xinjiang, recent investigations in Fu Kang City uncovered a horrifying food processing den. In the video, a dilapidated building was revealed to be the production site where animal innards were strewn haphazardly, an absolutely nauseating sight. Duck blood is also a common ingredient in hot pot dishes. This consumer bought a box of duck blood, which quickly coagulated when cooked in the pot. When taken out and pressed with a paper towel, it turned into a flaky shape and exhibited a high degree of resilience. So how is this kind of duck blood made? First, we add salt citric acid, a must-have, and a coagulant, which acts as an antioxidant. This explains its 12-month shelf life. Pour in the water, let it dissolve naturally, throw in a spoon of blood powder, and watch it turn red instantly. Let it sit for half an hour, and then boil it in a pot. Compare this with the duck blood bought from the market. Doesn't it look almost identical? 
The saga of food scandals continues. Here in this video, a customer in a well-known spicy hot pot chain in China ordered three plates of lamb. The staff reassured him that these are pure lamb. Feeling suspicious, he took the meat for an inspection and found that it not only contained lamb, but also pork and duck meat. And those various vibrant and colorful fish balls and fish tofu items are basically all synthetically created thanks to the use of artificial high-tech products. It's simply a matter of changing the types of flavoring and dyes used. In a recent incident on August 28th, a resident of Yanji City, Jilin Province, purchased four scallops. Upon returning home, she discovered that two of them contained a significant amount of sand and mud instead of the expected fresh meat. These scallops are filled with so much sand. Look at this 45 yuan per half kilo, bought at the West Market in Yanji. Look at this, all sand. What a ripoff! In a concerning revelation, footage shows the unsanitary practices at a questionable beer factory. The video clearly shows a lack of hygiene protocols in the processing room, where several female workers can be seen manually filling empty cans with a self-mixed concoction that they call beer before sealing them as finished products. Here, another video unveils a black market mineral water production site operating below standard safety and hygiene regulations. The footage shows employees nonchalantly filling up empty mineral water bottles directly from a tap within an unsophisticated setup. The bottles are then simply sealed with a cap, indicating a disturbing reality behind the production of various branded mineral waters commonly consumed by the public. In another incident, a customer in Yueqing City, Zhejiang, caught a restaurant staff concocting beverages using tap water and some unidentified solid ingredients. Tell me, is this purified water or tap water? Are you using mop washing water to make these drinks for us? This is what you are serving us, isn't it? The boss explained that the employees didn't know any better, an explanation this customer naturally refused to believe. They have already reported the incident to the relevant authorities. In another shocking incident, on the 31st of August, a family dining out in Anshan, Liaoning, were dismayed to discover a shu insole present in their fish stew, marking a particularly distressing experience during their meal out. We went out for a meal, and when the fish was served, we found a shu insole inside. We called the owner over who promised to investigate. Later, he claimed that the chef accidentally knocked the insole into the pot and didn't notice it. Quite a far-fetched explanation, don't you think? Anyway, we didn't need it. They didn't charge us, and we just decided to dine somewhere else. Longan pulp is a nourishing ingredient favored by many Chinese people. However, do you know how the pulp is extracted from the shell? Recently, a significant stir has arisen in China following the World Health Organization's release of information suggesting a possible carcinogenic risk associated with aspartame. On July 13th, two agencies within the World Health Organization unveiled their research findings on aspartame, a synthetic chemical sweetener that has been widely used in a variety of food and beverage products since the 1980s. One of the agencies, the International Agency for Research on Cancer, categorized aspartame as a substance that could potentially be carcinogenic to humans. In contrast, another committee, the Joint Expert Committee on Food Additives, stated that there is no convincing evidence to demonstrate a connection between aspartame and cancer in humans, maintaining that individuals can still safely consume the sweetener in moderate amounts. The review processes of the two institutions are both independent and complementary, aiming to assess the potential carcinogenic hazards and other health risks associated with the consumption of aspartame. The WHO neither recommends companies to withdraw products containing aspartame nor urges people to cease its consumption completely. However, it advises moderation. According to WHO data, it's safer to consume up to 40 milligrams of aspartame per kilogram of body weight daily. The WHO's statement ignited a widespread debate on food additive safety. Chinese independent media journalists began to investigate the use of additives in various foods, discovering an alarming overuse of additives in various products. One man, upon purchasing a loaf of bread from a major supermarket, was shocked to find it contained over 20 different additives. Did I just buy a bag of bread or a bag of fertilizer? 
Another woman bought a pack of dried beans, which surprisingly didn't spoil after three days at room temperature, although typically they would go bad in a day. She later learned from the seller that these beans can be placed out for one week without going bad because they have been soaked in preservatives. Here in this video, a woman claims that an ice cream didn't melt after being left out overnight. Friends, take a look at this. I bought these wholesale ice creams for my kid. Yesterday, while cleaning the fridge, I placed them in a wastewater bucket overnight. To my surprise, the ice creams didn't melt at all. In my experience, any ice cream should melt once it's out of the fridge, but these didn't. I wonder if it's still safe to let my child eat the remaining ones. Recent reports have consumers complaining about noodles that wouldn't break apart even after cooking. Internet searches revealed these noodles contain gluten strengtheners. But what are these strengtheners made of? Apart from the 10% edible cornstarch, the remaining 90% is filled with various fatty acid esters and additives like xanthan gum gum. In March of this year, regions like Jiangsu, Henan, and Shandong in China discovered a significant amount of eggs tainted with veterinary drugs. Chickens were fed feeds laced with excessive antibiotics, reducing disease rates and shortening growth periods. Overuse of antibiotics led to drug residues accumulating in the chickens. Long-term consumption of these tainted eggs can cause gastrointestinal irritation, headaches, dizziness, and potentially liver damage. For instance, there was a case in Henan where a chicken farm owner, Zhang, crushed metronidazole tablets and added them excessively to corn feed. He then gave the feed to his chickens. Eggs from chickens which contained toxins were sold to the public. Zhang was sentenced to a year in prison and fined 10,000 yuan. Sea duck eggs, known for their rich nutrition and appealing appearance, have become increasingly popular. These eggs come from ducks that thrive in coastal mangroves, feeding on fish, shrimp, crabs, shellfish, and algae. However, insiders have claimed that most sea duck eggs sold in the market are fake. Take a look at this, folks. How many of you have eaten these red-hearted, oily sea duck eggs? Let me tell you, these have nothing to do with sea ducks. Before pickling, these yolks are already red because of the dyes and additives in the duck feed. Moreover, they are quickly marinated, ready in just a few days. The magic of high technology. Recently, due to Japan's decision to discharge nuclear wastewater, many Chinese citizens are spurred by the official media, claiming they would cease seafood consumption. This boycott impacted China's fishing industry. Yet some netizens took a clearer stance. A Beijing netizen remarked, quote, It's about perspective. Minor incidents in Japan become major news here. Meanwhile, significant issues here are downplayed. Others expressed concerns about the lack of oversight on domestic issues. He commented, quote, While Japan's actions can be monitored globally, no one is truly overseeing our own affairs right now, which is what's truly frightening. Another comment said, quote, The dangers of China's technological might and harsh practices are no less concerning than Japan's wastewater discharge. How do they have the audacity to criticize others? Indeed, these netizens aren't wrong. The Chinese government seems to turn a blind eye to its severe food safety problems, which continue to escalate. In contrast, Japan's wastewater disposal, which had already received safety approval from the International Atomic Energy Agency, has been vehemently criticized, creating a theatrical uproar. Later on, the backlash ironically brought to light China's clandestine nuclear wastewater discharges, forcing China to dial back its criticism. However, this series of events appears to have served as a wake-up call for the growing number of Chinese citizens, who are now gaining a clearer perception regarding the actions and intentions of the Chinese Communist Party. Moreover, some hospitals have been cashing in on the fear around Japan's nuclear wastewater. On September 2nd, the Guangzhou No. 12 People's Hospital launched the first radiation health clinic, with costs around 1,000 yuan per person. Yet, according to state media, it'll be approximately 240 days before Japan's discharged wastewater reaches China's coast. So if tests are initiated now, who will be responsible if health issues are detected?